Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, Quantum Leap Morning Market Review and Trade Level Setup for Monday, November the 4th, 2013. If you're visiting us from Twitter or watching the video, we are Quantum Leap. We're, we're a self-organized learning environment. My name is Doug McKay. I'm the uh, founder and uh, head moderator. If you're interested in checking out our Skype room, we've had it running now for about four years. A uh, good group of traders people learning, looking to learn. You can open up a Skype account and uh, give me a contact request at Doug underscore McKay. I'll be the one from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Or you can contact me at my email, dm at m4connects.com or call me on my office line at 519-250-5530. Uh, Each morning we come together and we uh, look at the market, to see where we are, and we set up our trade levels for the day. Uh, I need to get the disclaimer out of the way. This information is for the purpose of educating members who want to expand their knowledge of the business of trading. It's not for trading or investment advice. You and only you are responsible for the trades or investment decisions you make. Trading futures or any instrument involves the risk of loss. Please consider carefully whether futures or options are appropriate to your financial situation. Only risk capital should be used when trading futures or options. Investors could lose more than the initial investment. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance it's, it's not indicative of future results, and any trades that you may see in uh, Quantum Leap are for education purposes. Please trade your own plan, do your own due diligence. All right, so the first thing that we like to do is take a quick look. We've been keeping a homework sheet. We put out what we call our QLTP um, each each day with uh, you know a ladder above and below the uh, the uh, previous day close. We collect the data on a daily basis. Uh, this is put out into the quantum leap room uh, and look at the macro to the micro numbers. So, I mean, the big thing for me right now is the month open 1755.50 50, uh, 50, and the month low 1747. We've been trending up pretty strong, but you can see we're starting to uh, get some weakness. The green is trending up, red is trending down. You can see that most of the uh, 1230 numbers have, are starting to... Uh, you know, come down. Although we do have um, we do have some uh, you know some strength coming into the morning. In terms of the daily news, we've got uh, factory orders uh, at nine. We've got FOMC member Powell speaking, and then uh, Rosengren speaking a little bit later. So, uh, not any really big scheduled news. Let's take a quick look at the uh, overall macro to micro trend. See where we are within the trends in the different time frames. You can see monthly trend very strong, trading up at the upper distribution of the uh, prior month. Uh, got good slope and separation on the 9 and the 20. Price is paralleling the 9. We've not closed below the 9 EMA on the monthly all year long. Very strong trend on the monthly. On the weekly, we did have those, uh, you know, the one instance where we closed below the 20, but we popped back up. Then we had the government shutdown, brought it back down, tried to close below the 20, and then the government uh, uh, deal came through and we popped back up and, you know, uh, the trend is resuming and we've got good slope and separation. So this trend looks very strong on the uh, weekly as well. On the daily, we had created that technical gap and we closed the gap through a bit of time and price. Uh, we've come down and tested the 9 EMA. We've now bounced off of it. We do, got, we do have good slope and separation, so the trend on the daily is still intact. Looking at the geometric uh, charts, um, you know, we're above the center line of the modified shift chart that we, or shift uh, fork that we added a couple weeks ago. The long-term uh, fork that we've been following, we're above its center line. So the key right now is do we continue up? We nearly uh, touched the upper line of the longer-term fork. Uh, didn't quite get there, missed it by about two points. Uh, we came back down. I thought we were going to come down and test the uh, center line of the modified shift chart. Uh, missed it by about two points, and now we've been going sideways in a consolidation. So, I mean, if you know our outside targets for today, if we come down and test the uh, the lower uh, the center line of the uh, modified uh, shift fork, that'll bring us down into that 1745. That's my extended target to the low side. I'll show you why on my chart. If we go up and uh, and test the upper 
line of the longer term fork that will bring us up into 1779 year and give us a new high uh, in that 1780 which is all important um, but currently right now uh, everything looks like it's pretty strong uh, to the upside going over to the uh, intraday and see where we are in the smaller time frame uh, trend you can see that uh, you know we were very strongly trending up on the four hour we came down created that technical gap closed the tech gap walked the line down on the nine and uh, then we broke back above and we're above the nine and the twenty right now we've got a uh, you know cross and ma hug going on between the nine ema and the twenty sma and we're currently trading above so uh... it looks like they want to resume the trend but we're at a decision point right now going down to the thirty minute 30 minutes shows a little bit uh, different picture. We consolidated and then we broke back up above and we're currently uh, trading above the 9 and the 20 and we're getting slope and separation. We do have a naked cross uh, down here at the 1758 area. So let's go over and take a look at the composite chart. Now this might be a little bit uh, confusing. What I've done is I've created uh, three internal uh, 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 micro composites. Two, we broke out of this balance down here. We came up and we, you know, the first two days and uh, above, we found fair value at 1750. Then we went up, made the new high, tried to hold value up here at uh, 1764.50. Couldn't hold value. Came down and we've been trying to hold value down here at 1754 and a quarter. Uh, so you know you've got three micro composite VPOX at 50, 54 and a quarter, and 6450. But the overall balance and the most accepted price in the last six trading days is down here at 54 uh, and a quarter. So they're trying to hold value uh, here at 54 and a quarter. They do an, they've been doing a good job. They've held it. Now they're moving back up towards this uh, 1764.50. So the key areas that I'll be trading uh, based on the micro composite and the composite is this uh, 62 and a quarter. If we get above 62 and a quarter, I'll be looking for a move towards uh, 1764.50, where they, uh, you know, they tried to hold value before they fell out of, uh, of balance and down uh, to the lower distribution down here. And then if they can hold that 60 again a move up to break through the 6575 up to 6750 and then a move to make a new high in the RTH above 177050 and equalize out my main target above is that 177325 which is our all-time high and the high that was put in that globex let's take a look at uh, the over uh, night So overnight they went up and uh, you know we opened up in uh, I think we opened up for the week at uh, we opened the week at 1754 so right at that uh, value that they were holding that's our uh, our VPOC from uh, from Friday they took it up and you know held value in around that 58 and uh, went up and uh, created uh, balance up here at 1760. They looks like they've accepted this uh, this value now at 1760, and they're trying to go higher. So the overnight inventory is net long. Um, so let's move our uh, numbers over to our intraday chart. 1761.75 right now is our. Uh, is our overnight high that could change obviously with uh, with more time and the fact that we're trading right there the overnight low 1753 and a quarter our overnight VPOC is 176050 and there's no real you got a little bit of a LVN here at 1759.75, uh, which is right near this uh, LVN here at 1759, and then you've got value area high 
from yesterday, 758. So in terms of my levels that I'll be trading is I will be trading off of uh, this area right here uh, between the 1759 and the value area. Uh, I'm expecting us to come down uh, and test that. If we get inside of the value area, uh, I'm looking for rotation down to take out the uh, the uh, naked uh, close at 17.54.50 and the naked VPOC at uh, 17.450. We have the overnight low just below that at 17.53 and then the other significant LVN that uh, really uh, separated the two distribution uh, uh, HVNs from Friday at uh, 17.52.25. That will be another area that I'll be trading down here. You can see that that 17.52.25 is also a CLVN that puts us below the ov overall larger microcomposite value area low and below the uh, microcomposite value area for the last two days of trading. So if we get uh, below and get outside of value, I'm looking for a move down towards the 1750 area, the HVN from Friday in the lower distribution, but more importantly, oh, didn't mean to do that. More importantly, it's that 1750 where they came up, broke out of the prior balance broke out of that prior balance down and came up and held value before making a new uh, year high. So that 1750 area is going to be uh, a magnet uh, below whether or not we can find buyers to hold us up there or not or we come down to the other side of balance uh, down here at 1747. That will be another area that I'll be doing business down here is at the 47 level. And then uh, another target below us where we've got uh, the naked V pocket 1745.50 and those two naked crosses that we haven't taken out yet at 1746 and 1745.75. And that will bring us down to test the center line of the modified uh, shift fork that we added a couple weeks ago. So that's my main extended target uh, below is at 17.45.50. And then of course uh, above us, um, got to put our naked crosses in, we've got 17.57.25. On the five minute, and 1750, uh, 1757, 50 on the 15 minute, and 1758 on the 30 minute. So you can see we've got this area of confluence just below us at uh, between 1757 and 1758, which is just inside of our value. Now we're opening up outside of the range. So my main hypothesis is to first look to see if we get uh, initiative buyers up here. I'm, in, I'm anticipating going down and obviously our, uh, our overnight uh, uh, high is extending here. Let me just see where it is now. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. Uh, high is now up at uh, 62 and a quarter. So, you know, we're opening up just outside of the prior day range, probably even go up and make another new high. So what we want to see is, you know, they're making this move early. If we get initiative buyers stepping in, do they just take us, uh, you know, take us right out of the gate and, uh, you know, leave the gap. The gap is going to be, you know, uh, you know, probably close to 8 to, uh, uh, to 10 points in between there. Do we go up and test that range high from Thursday at 64 and continue our move up through that 65, uh, 75, and, you know, up into the upper distribution here at 67.50? Uh, you know, with a possible move to test that uh, 1770 and then go and equalize the highs. Um, we have naked crosses still that we haven't taken out at 6975, 71 and a quarter, and my main target above is that equalization of the, uh, of the uh, you know, the uh, Globex high, which is our all time high, which is above our RTH high at 1770 market has a tendency to balance those two areas out. So I'm looking to see whether or not we have initiative 
uh, sellers coming in. If we stay below the 62.25, I'd be looking for a thrust into taking out the uh, overnight high and a push towards 64, which is where I'm anticipating a possible, uh, you know, uh, reaction from the sellers to step in between that uh, 64 and 64.50. So that's going to be an area that I'll be looking to do business with the 17.65.75. Then I'm anticipating buyer or sellers to step in, push us down through to test the range high, and then if we get inside of the range high, a move down to 59.50, and then a move to test the uh, valuary high in the LVN from the upper distribution um, in that 50, uh, 58. 50 to 59 uh, and a quarter level, and if we break through there, I'd be looking through to take out these naked crosses, but the big move down to that uh, 17.54.50, and then I anticipate that we uh, we balance and uh, go sideways in this area with a push down to test the LVN between the two distribution points, uh, but not break it. Um, that's my main hypothesis that we go up try to push a little bit higher, sellers come in, and then we come down and we chop around in this zone down here. Uh, my second hypothesis is we break inside of the, uh, the uh, prior day range, move down to close these levels, and then push to break through the LVN and, uh, and go down and test the lower HVN and distribution down here with a test of the uh, range low at 47 and I push through down to uh, 45 and get, you know, fall out of this value. If they can't hold that value, then the move down has got to be through to the 45 area, get inside of this prior balance uh, area with a push down to uh, the 1738.75, which is the microcomposite VPOC that we keep talking about. We need to come down to test to pick up buyers for one more run to the upside. Looks like it's been pretty strong overnight though, so uh, you know that's my secondary hypothesis. My third hypothesis is we just you know find initiative buyers and go up and uh, and get back above uh, 64. Go up to the 64 level, hold value up there, uh, you know buyers continue to pour it on and then we push through to the 67 and up through 70 and uh, my main target above at that uh, 73 uh, and a quarter area. In terms of the uh, Keltner with the Renko, a test of the upper Keltner bar will uh, line will bring us up into that 63, 64 area. Uh, by the time we get there it will probably be 64. So that 64.50 is the main target above. A test of the center line on the Keltner is going to bring us down into that area where I've got uh, naked crosses in the value area, uh, you know, uh, value area high from Friday at uh, 57.50, 50, 58 by the time we get there. And then a break below that, the move down to, uh, you know, test the lower Keltner will take us down to that uh, middle distribution and the HVN from the lower distribution. Remember, double distribution days are generally revisited uh, in the next couple sessions. Not necessarily the next session, um, but definitely within the next couple sessions. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of, uh, of the ES. Take a quick look at uh, gold. Gold move that made that move down towards to test that 1304 CLVN that we talked about uh, last week. Didn't quite get to it. Got down to uh, the uh, low was uh, 130570. Since then, uh, it's found some buyers and it's come back up. Where did it come back up to? Well, that main level, which was our main target. Uh, below at that 1318 around the microcomposite VPOX, uh, you know, where we launched, you know, where we came down to test, and where we come down again. So, you know, currently we're trading in around that 1318. Targets above, if we, uh, you know, stay above this 1315.90 CLVN, I'd be looking for that 24 again. See these numbers keep playing out over and over again. The other side of balance at that 37 uh, CLVN. Uh, test of the uh, lower value area will be uh, 39 uh, area, but if we get above that, the main target above is 54, where we tried to hold the balance uh, to continue our move back up. So you got 
you've got to the top side, you've got 24, 37, 54, and then all those same numbers, the 63, the 66, and the uh, 87 area, which is still the main target above. If we do get below the 1304 and we can't hold, you know, you'd be looking for a move down to the uh, 1295 area, 1292. The big one below is 1285, I'm sorry, 1284.90, 12, call it 1285, uh, and then the big target below is down here where they picked up buyers the last move down at uh, 1268, uh, and I'm anticipating that will hold this 1268, possibly a push through down to the 6250 uh, area, but then come up and uh, chop around in this area right now. But uh, so far, they're holding the uh, the 04 level. As long as we're stay above the 04 level, I'm looking for a rotation back up towards those upper numbers. So that's what I'm looking at in gold and ES. Howard, over to you. Thank you, Doug. So I'll take a quick peek at the weekly chart. Um, this was last week uh, where we made our new high and then had a rejection from there, so we formed not a textbook shooting star, but sort of one, uh, also a brief. Um, so we'll see if this uh, begins a bit of a consolidation area here or not, and uh, we'll take a look at the market breadth here shortly. Uh, but so far this week we have a strong start before even getting to the first RTH session. So let's take a look at the daily. So after we set our high um, back on the 30th, we had uh, some consolidation here. We had a test of the 9 EMA. I had another test of it in the Globex session with rejection. Um, so this will be a key level of support which right now is at uh, 50, 1752.75. So let's go ahead and take a look at our market breadth. So starting with the advanced decline and up-down volume, you know, here in the SPY is where we set our high, but we can see that we actually set our high in the advanced decline here in the middle chart back on the 22nd and also for up-down volume on the 22nd. We had a little bit of a move higher in these, but made a lower high in both advanced declines and up-down volume, and these values are on a 10-day average basis. So we can see that since the 22nd, market breadth has been uh, getting weaker. Uh, NASDAQ actually pushed below the midpoint of 50% on both the advanced decline and up-down volume, so they're more net decliners on the NASDAQ, and on both the advanced declines, the NYSE, which is in blue, uh, is pretty much right at the break-even point. So as we've seen in some of the past uh, market swings, the these two indicators have uh, kind of given us advanced indication that the market could be in weakening or strengthening. And right now it looks like uh, the market is, you know, at least in a consolidation stage and weakening. And it gave that indication before we hit our all-time high. So now let's go look at our sectors. And we're seeing some mixed uh, results among the sectors. Uh, looks like the weakest sector is, has been home builders recently. 
you know, again, that's been one of the more volatile sectors for quite some time, where it showed the most strength coming up from here. Now it's showing more weakness. Uh, looks like energy is uh, showing a little weakness. Financials have come down but leveled off. Um, but we have other sectors that are uh, getting stronger. Um, XRT, which is retail, still is in the lead and has had the lead for quite some time is turning up. Uh, XLY, which is the consumer discretionary. Uh, home uh, uh, health care, which is the red one here, pointing higher. Uh, XLI, which is the industrials. So, you know, we can see that uh, the picture is mixed, which you would expect during a consolidation phase. Let's take a look at the Dow transports versus industrials. Uh, no changes here. Uh, industrials, I mean the transports uh, appear to be a bit stronger than the industrials. And let's go to our on balance volume. So the on-balance volume pretty much peaked within a day of price, moved lower with price, and you know, pretty much in sync. It did eventually make a higher high from back here, but you know, it was a little bit non-convergent you know, up to that point before it finally did break into a new high, so the strength of the new high isn't as strong as the strength of the new high in price over this last uh, last high. So a little bit weaker, but still uh, in sync with price. Uh, so I uh, would show the COT report at this point, but there have been no updates yet, so apparently the uh, government agency that puts out those reports is still well behind on their data still only have updates up until uh, October 1st, so about a month behind. So nothing to show there. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Doug. Thanks, Howard. Um, so we I uh, did make another a new high. The new overnight high is 1762.75. Uh, We're still holding the 62 level. Uh, look for a test on the open. And we've got uh, another 15 minutes. Look for if we stay in this uh, tight range between 62.75 and 61 and a quarter. Look for a test on the open of 61.25. Buyers stepping in and taking us up through 62.75 and up to that 64.50 area. Uh, hold there and move higher as one hypo. My main hypothesis: go up there, find sellers rotate back down, get inside of yesterday's range, test the value area high, break the value area high and come down, take out the naked crosses and the uh, naked VPOC, chop around inside of here with a push down to test the other side of balance at the uh, LVN from yesterday, but to hold and just uh, move through. L last hypothesis again is to come down Okay, sellers take control, push us back into value, come down, take out the naked VPOC, chop around here, test the lower uh, value or the uh, the LVN, and then come into the lower distribution and uh, come down into this 51 with a push through to the uh, 45, 50 area. The uh, full session ATR targets um, based on the 20-day ATRs. Full session uh, tar ATR target is 1781.50. Uh, full session ATR target uh, is 1744 uh, uh, and a quarter, call it 44.50. So that takes us down to that 45 area again, which is still my main, uh, you know, my main target uh, below. 
Uh, so just uh, you know, watch how they handle the range high from yesterday. If they push through, we could get a push through to 59 and uh, 58.75 before those buyers step in uh, and defend. But if you do break 61.25, I think you could get in and get funded with the possibility of coming down and taking this 58, uh, you know, uh, 50 uh, value area through and push through it. So I will be trading this uh, this 61 and a quarter if we break through it. Um, and if we, you know, come down and test it right off the open, uh, we could, you know, rotate back up and take out the overnight high. We have a very high probability of taking out this overnight high, considering that the overnight inventory is net long and it's looking really strong right now. So, you know, it all depends, you know, you know how they handle this uh, this range high on whether or not we come down and test the value area. So just uh, you know, make sure that you're not jumping, you know, jumping into a trade right off the bat. Wait till one side, uh, you know, takes control, and then uh, you know, know where you're wrong quickly. And uh, you know, for me, if you're getting long, you want to have your stop uh, below 60.75. I'd be putting my stop somewhere around, you know. 59 and a quarter, uh, you know, because if we're 59 and a quarter, we're likely to come down and, and test this 58 to uh, 50 area. And again, we've got, you know, strong confluence of these naked crosses down here between the three different time frames between 57 uh, and 58. So we could push through there. Um, if you're getting uh, short, well, I would say that uh, get short below 61 and a quarter, but put your stop above, uh, you know, 62.75, 63 and a quarter uh, is where I'd probably put my stop. Because, uh, you know, if we get above uh, 62.75, they're likely to go up and test that 64.50. So that's going to complete the uh, morning market review uh, for Monday, November the 4th, uh, 2013. As always, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.